Hello again, this is Kyle. Let's write some code. Today we're going to be talking about Node.js process and child process. And for this tutorial, you'll of course need to have uh, Node.js installed or IOJS um, installed. And I'll put a link in the description to an earlier video uh, I did which shows you how to get um, those installed. Now, so all Node scripts have this variable called process. It's globally available everywhere. And there's only one of them and it's a global because uh, basically all node scripts only have a single process and they only run in a single process. Uh, now process gives you access to some goodies uh, such as uh, process.argv and argv is uh, basically any parameters that have been passed into our script. Uh, so we're just going to console log these out and take a look at what this looks like here. Um, so our script is named index.js, and so here from the, the terminal, we can simply write node index.js to run it. Um, and you'll see that the first uh, item in our argv is the, the, the script, the, the binary that is running uh, its, its node itself. Um, I'm using IOJS here, so that's why it's called IOJS, but if you're using Node.js, you'll see Node.js. And then the second one is the script we're running here, and that's uh, uh, the index.js. But if we passed in, say, you know, a, a command line parameter here, um, you would see that the the third item on that array is the parameter we passed in, um, and and so forth. So forth, uh, it will add to that array. Now another thing that process has is process.standard out and process.standard error. Um, and these let us write out um, of our script either to the, the standard out channel or the standard air channel. Um, and in fact, if you're familiar with doing console log, um, console log is basically just doing this, standard out write um, our message plus a new line. Um, these are essentially the same thing. Um, this is just writing to the standard out stream here. Um, and in doing so, this, so if we say message, hello, and then run our script here. We get the same thing as if you would see it with uh, console log. Now, because they're streams, we can do fun things with these. Um, so, such if we're gonna have the file system module here. Um, now, if uh, you watched a previous video I did on streams, you can see how fun streams can be. Um, but anyways, if you didn't, what we're basically doing here is we're creating a read stream that's gonna read a file name. And the file name we're going to give it is this underscore underscore file name, which refers to uh, the file name, the file we're in itself. And so this is just going to read the file itself. And then we're going to call pipe and we're going to pipe it to process that standard out. And so this is basically just going to read the file and uh, pipe it directly to process standard out. So when we run this script, we get the script itself pro uh, piped out to uh, the standard out. Now something else worth knowing about uh, Node.js is that it's basically going to exit when it runs out of things to do. So say if I have a set timeout here that calls uh, something one second later, let's say process standard out, right? We're gonna do the long console log way. Um, we'll say hooray bears. So what Node is going to do is going to pause right here, or not really pause, but it's going to know that there's uh, something going on and we're going to just sit there and wait for a second. And then after the second is called, it's going to call this line and it's going to have nothing left to do, so it's going to exit. So when I run this script, it's going to wait a second and then it's going to print hooray bears and exit now that it's all done. Um, but we can tell Node to do something forever. Uh, such as with set interval, this is just like set timeout, except that it will call something um, every, you know, repeatedly over and over and over. And so if we just simply call a set interval here and we just keep adding this function on it, um, basically uh, node will just sit open forever, as you see here, because it always got something to do. And it will only exit when we hit control C or the program crashes for whatever reason. Now maybe there's a, a some point in your script where uh, you want to force um, the process to exit. Uh, so say we have a set interval here that gets called every um, 100 milliseconds, and we're just going to increment this count. We can say, okay, if the count is greater than 10, if 10 of these 100 milliseconds have passed after one second, we are going to exit. So we can call process.exit, 
and this will basically signal our script um, after one second here to exit for us. Moving on, Node, since it runs in a single process, there's probably times where you don't want it to run in a single process, that uh, you, you want to run it in a, a child process or, or some part of your app. Maybe you have a really expensive part that's doing a lot of uh, computations or some kinds of things, and you don't want it running and blocking the main uh, process, and you want to spawn it off into the child process to, to do that kind of thing. Or maybe this child process is very fragile and it can crash at any time, and you don't want it to crash your main process, so you can throw it into a child process. Or, or maybe the node script, it's not even a node script, it's, it's like some other kind of binary on your system um, that you just want to run. Uh, to do that, we are going to use uh, require uh, child underscore process. And this will let us uh, spawn or execute um, out uh, child processes. Uh, for instance, if we want to execute, there is a, uh, a, a function on here called uh, execute or exec. Um, and basically, uh, so, you know, if we have on the terminal here, you know, maybe we have a, a cat command here, um, and cat just outputs the uh, contents of our file here. And we just want to run that command. So we can call exec, and we can put in that same, uh, same command here. And once that command is done, it's going to call this callback, which is going to give us an error if there is one. Um, and then it'll give us the contents of the standard out from this, uh, from this script here. Um, and then also the contents of standard error. Um, so we can just console log out. Um, we got our catted file standard out. And so now when we run this, uh, we should hopefully uh, run uh, cat um, and get the output of that file. So we say node index.js, and there we go. We got our catted file, and it has the contents of the file. Now you just got to remember that this is running a binary that is on this system. Um, not all binaries exist on all systems. And so, of course, cat is not going to work on Windows. I think the equivalent would be the type command over there. So just be aware of that when you're um, executing um, other binaries that may or may not be on the system. So exec is great for one-off little things, but we want something a little bit more robust. And so uh, we can use uh, spawn. And spawn is very similar to exec, except it gives us a lot more control over how, uh, how our child processes ran. So spawn will uh, take the first parameter, and it's just the name of the binary that we're going to, uh, to spawn here. Um, but instead of uh, running a, an, another script here, we want to run a node script, um, almost as if in our script we're typing here node index.js here. Um, and so to get the, uh, since we already are in nodes, to get the current uh, binary that we're, we're running on the current process, we can use process.exec path, and this is the path to the current version of Node.js that we're, that's currently running this script. Uh, now, so the next thing that Spawn wants is an array of arguments passed to it. And so the first one here is going to be our um, index.js file or the, the, the Node script that we want to, um, to execute here. Um, and since this is index.js already, I'm just going to say underscore underscore uh, file name, and this will automatically be the path um, to the script itself. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pass in a, another parameter here that lets us know that this is a child process. And that way we don't create an infinite loop of this process spawning itself, and then which, of course, would then spawn itself, and then, of course, then would spawn itself all the way until your computer explodes. Um, and so to do this, what we can say is if process argv, and it's going to be the second parameter that we passed in here, uh, if that parameter equals child, then we are in, we, this is the child process. This is the child spawn process. Otherwise, it's not the child spawn process. And of course, we want then to call this spawn child process to, uh, to spawn it here. So by default, spawn will give our output input uh, channels as uh, streams. So if we create a variable here called our child or for our child process, uh, we can access that stream uh, by uh, doing child.standard out. And any data that gets written to this uh, channel, um, we can pipe out here. So we'll say console log from child 
data to string. And then just to write something out from the child, I'm from, I'm inside the child, just to be clear, that from this point on, this is, this is from the child spawning this part of our script, um, in which case it's going to write to our standard out here, and then we're going to get that standard out and write it from here. So let's run this and see what it looks like. So as you see, we say we get the message from the child. I'm inside the child. Um, so what it's done is, is the first thing that's gone along here. It's hit this line. It's it's spawning this child process, which then it goes through and runs and it hits this line, which then outputs the the this message to our standard out here. In which case, then it grabs it, and finally outputs it to um, our own process uh, dot standard out. But since it's a stream we can pipe it. So we can say child.standard out, pipe to our process.standard out, and get the uh, same result here um, from inside the child. So basically anything written within the child process will be piped directly to our, our main process uh, standard out. Um, and then there's a shorthand that we can do this uh, when we create the, uh, the child process here. Uh, this third um, um, argument here, we can provide an option called uh, standard.io, and we can simply say inherit. And this won't create this uh, standard out uh, channel for us to pipe to. Instead, it'll just automatically uh, pipe all the, the to the process.standard out, basically inherit from the parent process of which ones to do. And so we'll, we get the same, um, the same output as if we explicitly um, piped each one of these channels out. Now, it's important to know that each process is completely self-contained. And this may be, seem super obvious to you, but it really threw me off when I first got started with Node.js. Uh, so for instance here, I'm going to create a variable called bears, and this is just going to keep track of how many bears we have. Um, and so every time this script runs, it's going to add a bear here. And so I'm going to just then console log out the bears here, and our uh, parent process is also going to console log out uh, the bears here. So let's say bears, parent bears, and then child bears. And so what this is going to do is the first time it comes around, it's, you know, it's not going to have this child uh, um, argument passed on to it. So it's going to hit this part first, and it's going to spawn itself as a script and then write uh, the bears out here. Um, and you might expect, um, since we have this variable bears, it's in the same script, that maybe it's going to increment our bears here. But when we run the script here, you'll see that both uh, the parent and the child are one. Um, and that's just because every single process in Node um, is its own context, its own thing. So, you know, just because we have a bears here does not mean that when we spawn it in a child process that, it, you know, the bears is going to somehow um, share that same context, share that same information. They are completely independent of each other. And, I mean, maybe that's super obvious to you, but it was totally not that obvious to me, and it kind of threw me off a little bit when I first started getting into Node. So I just wanted to point that out. But now maybe you want to send messages back and forth between the child process and the parent process, such as, you know, maybe you want the child to say, okay, I'm all done. Now you're free to kill me and do whatever cleanup work you want to do. Um, so the standard IO uh, parameter here, we can pass it an array, and this will define on how we want to set up each of the channels. Uh, so the first three are going to be uh, standard in, uh, the next one standard out, and then the third one is standard air. I'm passing null to all three of these, which is just going to use the default, and um, it's going to create a pipe uh, for each one of these here. Um, but the we can specify more than just those three channels. And so I'm going to specify, uh, you know, a third or a fourth channel here that is a pipe. And so this is just a, a way for me to send messages down to the child and have the child send messages back up. Um, so in order for the child to uh, read from this is they can read from a file descriptor here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use uh, the net not NAT, the NET uh, API here. Um, and we're going to um, simply create a pipe, um, that's new NET socket. 
And the socket we're going to be listening to is a file descriptor three. Um, so since this is the, the third uh, file descriptor uh, available to this process, uh, we can create a socket connection to that file descriptor. Um, and so from here, what we can do is we can write to this pipe here, um, you know, a message. So we'll say write kill me because we want to notify the parent process uh, that we're all done and, you know, please kill me. Um, so in order to get this off of the child process, to get this message it's sending up here, we can access this uh, child.standard.io um, uh, array here. And um, since it's our third, uh, our third channel here, uh, we're going to put in three. And it's a, a stream, so we can listen to the data here. So we'll say on data, function data. And then we simply just check what messages that they're sending up. And so we say, okay, if the message they're sending up to us is kill me, we're going to console log out, rest in peace. And we are going to call child.kill and kill the child, as horrible as that sounds. So let's give this a try and see, hopefully, that it will run and spawn our child process then uh, send a message up out back to the parent process, get that message, log out console RIP, and kill the child. Hopefully it all works. It worked. Doesn't look like much, but it worked. It wouldn't have got here unless it worked. So it worked. Anyways, I hope that has helped you learn all about uh, the node process and uh, node child processes. And if it has, then please share the video. I would really appreciate that. Um, and if you want to see more videos, uh, please subscribe. Thanks again for watching.